Good morning, good morning, God bless you, or good afternoon, good night, whatever time of day it is that you have uh, come to this broadcast. I am Apostle Karen Proctor, uh, Apostle in the Lord's Church. Welcome to Powerhouse International Ministry Cyber Church. God bless you. Thank you once again for coming in. Do me a favor, please. Go ahead and begin to share the broadcast out. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Let somebody know that Powerhouse International Ministries Cyber Church is in session. Go ahead and wake up your mom. Wake up your dad. Wake up your sisters, your brothers, your friends, even your frenemies. Come on, wake up somebody. And if this is your first time coming to this broadcast welcome welcome to all of our first time viewers let us know where you are viewing from put a number one there put your uh city your state your country so that we can welcome you and to all of our returning viewers uh it is a pleasure to have you uh returning today god bless you the music that you are listening to, I do not own the rights to the music. But like I like to say, uh, the music is there to help usher us into the presence of the Lord. So here are some things that you can do to participate in the service of the Lord this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time of day it may be. But here's some things that you can do. Number one, you can go ahead and share the broadcast out. Share it out with your friends. Share it out with your family. Go ahead and share it. Place it on your timeline. Number two, you can go ahead and reach across those cyber aisles. Put up those little cyber hands. Wave across the aisle. Say hello to your sisters and brothers. Number three, last but not least. This is very important as well. We have links up there uh, that will point you to the direction in which you can share. Be a financial blessing to the ministry. You can uh, give through PayPal, Zelle, and Cash App. God bless you. God bless you. And we look forward to you uh, coming back again if this is your first time. And so, uh, if I had to give a title to this message today, I would entitle it, God Chose You. Yes, that's right. God chose you. Oftentimes, we are looking around at other people. But God have a plan and a purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. Don't turn your head now. Don't go off of the broadcast. Because God wants to speak to you today. God chose you. You may be wondering, why am I going through this? Why am I faced with this? Why am I the only one that has to do this? How did I get here? Whatever it may be. But can I tell you, God chose you. About two weeks ago, I was going to, uh, to purchase a particular service. And you guys know that we're in a pandemic. So a lot of these things are drive up. So you just have to let the person the business know that you are there and they'll come out to your car and they will service you. Well, um, before I can get service, um, I don't know what was going on, but it took some time. Nevertheless, as I was sitting in my car, uh, thoughts just began to come across my mind. Because uh, I don't like to waste time. So uh, praying, thinking on the things of God as I'm waiting to be serviced. And out of everything that I was thinking, I clearly heard God chose you. And you can say God chose me. 
God chose me. Mm -hmm. God chose you to be on that job. God chose you to be in that family. God chose you to live in that community. God chose you for so many different reasons. And a lot of times we try to buck up against the reason why God chose us for that particular thing. Um, is there anybody out there in the cyber church today that can resonate with what I'm saying? Uh, that God chose you. Mm, God chose you because, listen, everybody can't do what God uh, called you to do. Have you ever wondered why your hair is black or brown or blonde? Just something to think about. How about this one? Why are your eyes brown, hazel, green, or blue? Just something to think about. Try this one. Why were you born at the time that you were born? In the place that you were born in. To the parents that you were born to. Why? Is it because God chose you? I know in the book of Acts, it says uh, God placed every family, every place person in the country that he wanted them to be in. He chose every person to be born at the time that he <laughs> caused them to be born. So God chose you for so many different things. Why is your sister taller than you? Why are you heavier than your sister? Why is it that your brother have rhythm and you can barely uh, clap on beat? Hmm? Well, let's find out the answer. The answer is, According to Psalms 139 and 14, it says, And because you are wonderfully and fearfully made, Psalms 139 and verse 14, because you are wonderfully and fearfully made. So when God gave your sister and brothers different attributes, uh, different characteristics, different features, different from you, it's because you're set apart. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And so with that, I'm going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory for another time to come before your throne of grace, to share the word, uh, to break the bread of life with your people. Father, all of you and none of me. All of you and none of me. God, I pray that you would touch the hearts and the minds of your people, that they will be able to receive the word of God today. Lord God, touch them from the crowns of their head to the soles of their feet. Every ounce of distraction in their home, in their cars, on their jobs, wherever they are viewing from. We come against every spirit of distraction in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it. And now, God, we loose your presence. We loose the anointing of God. We loose the word of God to move in the life of your people and in the life of this cyber meeting in Jesus holy name God you be glorified today you be glorified your people be edified and Satan be horrified in Jesus name amen 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 and so um if you have not shared the video yet go ahead and share the video go ahead and tag someone go ahead and wake somebody up and let them know that god chose them that they are not a mistake so with that being said again psalms 139 and verse 14 you are wonderfully and fearfully made god has a purpose and a plan for your life that's different from anybody else. Let me say that again. 
God has a plan and a purpose for your life that's different from anybody else's life. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That the plan that God has for you is totally different from someone else's life. And yes, I get it. Sometimes we do have some similarities. Sometimes we do have some features that's alike. Sometimes we do have some attributes and uh, characteristics that are very similar to uh, other people. But you are still set apart. Your fingerprints, your handprints are totally different. Even if you are a twin, been in the womb with that sister or brother, that sibling at the same time, have the same DNA, but there is something different about you. Why? Because God chose you. And as I go back to reflect on that day that I was sitting waiting to be serviced, uh, I, I came to the point that God chose me. Well, we know that at times, but just because of things that are going on or may not be going on, sometimes it gets you to wondering, why me? Well, I asked the question today, why not you? And that's what God in essence spoke to me that day. God chose you. He knew that he called you for the job. He knew that you will be able to handle it. He knew that you will be able to uh, go through it with flying colors. Okay? God has a plan for every person that he created. He chose you for one thing and he chose another person for another thing. Mm. For instance, for instance, let's 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 go to the word. For instance, God told the prophet Jeremiah in uh, Jeremiah chapter one and verse five. He told Jeremiah this. He says, "Before I form you in your mother's womb, before I form you, not after." He said, but before I formed you in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart and I appointed you as a prophet unto the nations. Yes. He said, before. Isn't that amazing? God is so amazing. He is so incredible. His ways are past finding out. He told Jeremiah, listen here. No excuse. Don't give me no excuse. Mm. Don't give me no excuse about nothing. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb. See, sometimes we think that God purpose and plan for us starts at a certain juncture in our life. But the truth of the matter, it's not. It doesn't start at God's purpose for us. Reading Jeremiah chapter 1 and 5, God's purpose for us, we can clearly get a revelation that it didn't start even in the womb. He said, before I even formed you in the womb. Before. How amazing and incredible is that? Before I formed you in the womb. Before you even start growing in the womb. I had already did it. I already did it. Now, we don't know how God do what he do. Half of the time. Most of the time. 99 percent of the time, 99.99 percent of the time. We don't know, but all we know is he did it and he chose you. Just like he told Jeremiah, he said, before I form you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So isn't it possible that God knew you 
just like he knew Jeremiah before he placed you in your mother's womb and he chose you for such a time as this, for such a, not only a time, but with a purpose. I believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. So I want to read from God's word translation. The same Jeremiah chapter one and verse five. It say, I chose you before I gave you life. And before you were born, I selected you to be a prophet. Not only did he chose Jeremiah before he was born, but he selected. God was conscious. <laughs> Some of us are not conscious right now. Like we have a term that says, stay woke. Stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. Well, God is always ready. Mm. So, yeah, God's word translation says, I chose you before I gave you life, before you were born. I selected you to be a prophet unto the nation. So, in other words, God selected you for the task. He selected you for the job. He selected you to be where you are at this time. Now, the only time I would differ from that, if you are not in God's will. If you are not in God's will, then that's a whole different story. But if you are in God's will, like God told Jeremiah, before I even formed you in your mother's womb, I had a plan for you. I chose you. I chose you to be a prophet unto the nation. So what has God chosen you to do today? What has God uh, saying to you today, what task has God given you today? Well, I want to tell you the task that he gave Jeremiah. In that same Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, he said, See, I have set thee this day over the nation. So let me let me let me back up a little bit. Before I put you in your mother's womb, I had already chose you, formed you, selected you to be a prophet unto the nations, okay? I selected you. That's one part. Now he gets to the part, I selected you. Now here is what I want you to do. Somebody say, make it plain, apostle, make it plain. <laughs> here is what I want you to do. God chose you. He set you apart. Your hair is not like your sister's hair. Your voice is not like your sister's voice. Your fingerprint is not like your brother's. You may come from the same DNA. But this is what God told Jeremiah, I selected you, I call you. Now, here is what I want you to do. In that calling, that calling comes with something. Somebody saying, well, God, make me rich. Make me an entrepreneur. Make me this. Make me a wife. Make me a husband. Uh, Lord, make me known. Whatever you're asking God to do, it always come with something. It always come with something. I want to say stipulation. I don't know uh, if stipulation is the right word I should use, but God said, I made you a prophet unto a nation. Verse 10, Jeremiah uh, chapter 1. He says, see this day, mm, see this day, I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. You're not just a prophet to be a prophet. I didn't just put you in your mother's womb just to put you in your mother's womb. And I didn't just say, I call you a prophet to be a prophet. You got the word. God chose you. God chose you for a task. God chose you for a purpose. He says, see this day, I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That was his uh, purpose as a prophet. Not just, oh, I put you in your mother's womb before I formed thee. I already knew that I called thee to be a prophet to a nation. That's one part. But the other part is, as a prophet, here's what I want you to do. He had to, um, he say, see this day I set thee over the, over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. 
That means to tear down and he said to pull down to destroy. To deal with some tough things. Jeremiah had to deal with some tough things. And you may be in a spot right now that you're dealing with some tough things. But God chose you. God chose you. And then, not only the tough things that Jeremiah had to deal with. He says, but I want you to build and to plant. So after you deal with some of those hard situations, then God said, guess what? I want you to stop building. I want you to stop planting. So there's going to be um, a time for one thing and a time for another thing. But God chose you. That's why the writer of Ecclesiastics say there's a time for everything under the sun. Uh-huh. Can I tell you today that you are not a afterthought? You're not an afterthought. Some people walk around in life because uh, what the conditions they were born in, the devil may try to make them feel that they are an afterthought, but you're not an afterthought. God chose you. God has a purpose for you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying to you today? God have a purpose for you. Now, let's go back to Psalms 119, verse 15 through 16. And it says, well, 14, verse 14 tells you that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Let's go to verse 15 and 16. He said, my substance were, was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. And curiously wrought in the lower part of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. So in other words, the writer is saying, my substance was not hid. So the fact that my father's seed entered my mother's womb and connected and was being knitted together, the psalmist said none of this was hidden. None of this was hidden. Why? Because God know everything. He chose you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He say, even when I came to the lower parts of the earth, that day that I was born, even this very moment, nothing about you or me is ever hidden from God. Why? Because God chose you. He say, thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. Even in all of our unperfectness, our uh, quirkiness, yes. Some of us may be a little quirky, quirky. <laughs> but in all of that, all of our unperfectness, come on, hallelujah. He say, but guess what? He say, in thy book, all my members were written. Nothing goes by God. Some people seem to think that, but nothing goes by God. Nothing is unhidden. He say in continuance, they were fastened. So God, you made me when as yet there was none of them. It's just like Jeremiah. He say when as yet there was none of them before my substance even came into being. Everything was already written in the book. So God chose you. Mm-hmm. You are set apart for a purpose. You are chosen for a purpose. You may have some similarities uh, with your contemporaries. Just uh, let me take it back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet. Uh, we have a lot of prophets in the Bible. We have Ezekiel, Isaiah. We have Jonah, Daniel. We have... But Jeremiah was a different prophet with a different purpose. So just, I may have some women viewing me today. 
I'm a woman, you're a woman. We have a lot of similarities, but we are totally different. Your purpose in life, the reason why God chose you, may be totally different from the reason God chose me. Even though we have some similarities with our contemporaries, uh, but you are still different and chosen by God to be who you are, to do what you do at the time that he called you to do it. Yeah, you may have some similarities. You may be a singer. You may be a dancer. You may be an author. But it's just something different about your spin on it. It's something different about your take. Mm-hmm. You are different. You are chosen by God to do what you do at the time that you did it in, that you are doing it in. You can't walk in my shoes and I can't walk in yours. You know how sometimes people say, oh, I can do that. I can do what she's doing. I can do what he's doing, but it's something different. Mm. Even we may have the same size feet, but it's something different about the way, the pressure that my feet put on the shoes. It's something different about the weight of my body. Maybe my right foot give more pressure than my left foot. Yes, we may wear the same size, but the reaction that uh, your feet give to the shoes, the motion that your feet give to the shoes is different. And so when you look at your shoes and look at my shoes, your shoes may be bent over a little bit. Have you ever seen people with twisted shoes? <laughs> you may wear the same size, but their shoes are twisted. Yours not. Why? Because they may be heavier. They may be snoo footed. Whatever. So, yeah, you can't walk in my shoes and I can't walk in your shoes. Your destiny is your destiny and my destiny is my destiny. It always look easy to look at another person or people. Hallelujah. And you begin to say, but if it was me. But can I tell you, it's not you. For real, it's not you. They're on an assignment. Their assignment is different than your assignment. The way that they respond is different than the way that you may respond. Mm. And so with that being said, I just come to tell you today that God chose you. God chose you. You may have some good times. You may have some bad times. But God chose you. And when he chose you, hallelujah, Peter said you are a... Uh, a royal people. You are a chosen generation. And when he chose you, no matter what you're going through, he's going to bring you out. God is faithful. God is faithful. Mm. And so many of you may be saying, why me? Why me? Again, why not you? God chose you because he knew that he can count on you. He know that you're going to be faithful to the task. He know that you may get a little tired sometimes. But that's when uh, Isaiah 40 come into place. Come into play. He say he will mount you up on wings of an eagle. You may run and become weary. Hallelujah. He say, but he's going to mount you up. And your strength will be renewed. Come on. Hallelujah. God chose you. Everybody can't handle or deal with what you are dealing with or have dealt with. You know, here's the thing. You're like a lot of people say, um, if you knew my story, I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like uh, my story, the things that I had to come through. Why? Because God has preserved you through it all. Mm-hmm. God has preserved you. Hallelujah. God is a keeper. And everything, can I tell you, everything that the enemy means for harm in your life, God is well able, God is well capable of turning it around. So what's your story? What's your story? God chose you for what? God chose you for what? 
You may be facing a current situation that you think is too much for you. But I want to tell you that there is nothing that God has not brought you to that he's not capable of bringing you out. Yes, yes, yes. All of this is just in the making. All of this is just in the making of who you are. Uh, sometimes we hear people say no testimony, no test, no testimony. So sometimes you're going to be tried, but everything worked for the good of those who love the Lord. God is going to bring you out. If you are one of those people that feeling like it, and sometimes you feel like you are not fit for the journey. Well, why does the boss want to promote me? I don't have a clue on how to do this. Could it be that? God has just given you favor in this season and in this hour. And if God has chosen you, don't you know that the Holy Ghost is going to give you some instructions? Don't you know God is going to put uh, his super upon your natural? Because God chose you. Mm. Now, let's go to, let's just look at a few more people from the Bible. Um, let's look at. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. God chose them to go through the fiery furnace. They never thought. They could have never imagined. Mm. God could have not allowed them to go in there. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. But God said, go ahead in. Why? Because I want to show your enemies who stand behind you. So God allowed them to go through the fiery furnace and he brought them out. They didn't even have a, you know the story, they didn't even have fire, the smell of fire on them. Come on, hallelujah. He brought his disciples out of a storm. Remember that story with Jesus and his disciples on the boat and they thought that they were going to capsize? But God didn't let them capsize. Jesus got up and began to rebuke the storm. He got up and he be, began to rebuke the wind. And they said, what manner of man is this? God chose them to be on that boat with Jesus. And so now we can read about it to let us know that, hey, even when we're in the storms of life, God will bring us out of the storms of life. How about this one, Daniel? Daniel went in the lion's den. God chose him for the task. This thing didn't catch God by surprise. It did not blindside uh, God. Daniel thought, you know, hey, if God is with me outside the den, he'll be with me in the den. That was his rationale. But God had already knew that he was going to be uh, going in that den. God could have stopped it beforehand. But God chose that. That was no surprise, no secret to God. But guess what? We already know the story. And just in case you don't, I'm going to tell you the story today, the end of the story. Even though he went in a lion's den, God chose that the lion could not ravish Daniel's body. He shut the mouth of the lion. So, Beloved, even when you're going through some hard times and some difficult times, know that if you are in the perfect will of God, that you are chosen by God. You are not an afterthought. God will shut the mouth of every person that tried to come to shut you down, to tear you to pieces like they thought that the, the uh, lion in the den was going to tear Daniel into pieces. Not so. Mm. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what God is saying? Hallelujah. And the last one that I want to give you, example out of the Bible, is the children of Israel. You know how Pharaoh had them in bondage and slavery in Egypt. Mm. But God chose, hallelujah, to even allow them to go over there. Now, that was because of the hardness of their heart, the stiffness of their heart. But God could have not let it happen, but he let it happen. But after a time, God chose a deliverer in the person of Moses to go over there and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Come on. Hallelujah. So even in all of our rebelliousness, 
Sometimes God allow us to go through little things because of our rebelliousness, because of our stubbornness. But God chose you, beloved, and he loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And every now and again, he will send a man or a woman of God like he did in the person of Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And you know the story. God parted the Red Sea and the enemy of the Hebrew children, they drowned in the Red Sea while God made it where the Hebrew people, the children of Israel was able to walk over that, to come out of it. So who is God speaking to today? I want to tell you by the oracles of God, God chose you. He chose, how about this one? He chose Mary to give birth to Jesus out of all the little teenage girls in the village. He chose Mary. He sends the, the angel Gabriel to Mary. And he say, hail Mary. He say, thou have found favor in the sight of the Lord. Come on. He chose Peter. I said that was going to be the last story, <laughs> but he chose Peter, come on, hallelujah, to preach at Pentecost, the first Pentecost. He chose Peter out of all the other apostles, out of all the other disciples. God have a reason why he chose you. He chose Elijah to call down fire from heaven. We don't see no other prophet calling fire down from heaven. This is why we can't afford to uh, compare ourselves to one another. Come on. Hallelujah. We talked about uh, Jeremiah, the task that God gave Jeremiah. Now look at the task that he gave Elijah. Both were prophets. Elijah was the prophet of miracles. Come on. Hallelujah. So even when you're looking at the, the various men and women of God, don't get it bent. Don't get it twist. Well, Apostle Proctor, uh, uh, she don't uh, minister like this person. Uh, she don't prophesy like that person. Well, baby, can I tell you, can I put this little caveat in here? When God gave, made me and gave me my call, he didn't compare me to nobody. Why? Again, Psalms 139 and verse 14. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. Uh, before he knitted me and fastened me in my mother's womb, he already knew the assignment that he was going to give to me. He already knew the assignment that he was going to give to you. If you weren't going to be a teacher, if you weren't going to be a lawyer, a judge, an entrepreneur, come on, a stay home, a, a, a stay at home mom, a, a grandmother, whether you would ever have children or not have children, come on, hallelujah, God chose you. Glory be to God. So all you need to do now is surrender. Yes, yes. When I, when I look at this thing, I have two daughters and one son. All three of them are different, same, same parents, but different. Even when I look at my two daughters, one is tall, one is short. Mm -hmm. One is gifted in the arts. One is gifted in another area. Daughters of the same parents, but God has gifted them for different things, for his purpose. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So what am I saying to you today? No task is too small or too great when it comes to God. Sometimes you're looking, God, why you ain't make me like this? She could sing. I can't sing. She could dance. I can't dance. She got long hair. I don't have long hair. She has lighter color skin. I have darker color skin. God, well, you gave me this color skin. Oh, why am I so pale? And why is she dark? Come on. God did everything the way he wanted to do it. Like he told Job at one time when Job began to complain. Job, God say, where were you when I put the stars, the solars in the sky? Where were you? I never consulted with you. You never was my counselor. Mm. God chose you. No task is too great or too small 
When God calls you, whatever it is, he called you to do. And some people say, oh, I won't move. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, maybe God ain't called you to move. Maybe he called this person to relocate. Come on. Hallelujah. Your assignment and your task is not that person assignment or task. So when you don't know what's going on, be like Job 3 friends. Zip your lip and just sit there. <laughs> So whatever God has called you to, can I tell you today that no task is too small or too great? And that's why the Bible says he gave some 30, some 60, and some 90, uh, some 100. Guess what? He didn't give everybody the same thing. God broke it off the way he wanted to break it off. Are you hearing what God is saying? Saying to you today, whenever he call you, he qualifies you to do what he called you to do. Come on. Hallelujah. So Romans chapter eight and verse 30 says what? Moreover, whom he did predestine, predestine before time, predestine <laughs> that part. Mm. Isn't it funny that we keep coming up to this, this, this same uh, word today before I form thee? Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called, and to whom he called, them he also justified. Come on, your call is justified. Your call is justified. Come on. Hallelujah. Let me just read this over. Romans 8 and 30. Moreover, whom he did predestine, he also called. And whom he called, them he also glorified. Come on. Hallelujah. Them, I'm sorry. Them he also justified. Them he also glorified. Yes. He justified them. He glorified them because God wants to get the glory out of your life. Sometimes he can't get the glory just like that. You got to go through some things. Who is the Lord speaking to today? You got to go through some things. Hallelujah. God is going to justify you at the end. Hallelujah. He said to them, he also glorified. Hallelujah. So when people look at your life, and they see you are still standing for God. Hallelujah. No matter what the uh, adversity you may be facing, but you never gave up on God. Hallelujah. God is going to come in and glorify your life because he know at the end, you're going to say, God, you be glorified to you be the honor to you be the glory. God, to you be the praise. God, if it had not been for you on my side, I wouldn't been able to get through this. I would not be able to get through this had not it been for you on my side, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Are you hearing what the Lord is saying to you today? As I have recounted examples from the Bible, it's plain to see that God has chosen different people at different times for different purposes. Mm. Tag, you're it. God chose you. Amen. Hallelujah. God has chose you. Well, beloved, it has been a pleasure having you in the cyber church today. Um, if you have not shared or if you're just coming on, you can always go back and play the replay. I'm going to post it. You can go ahead and replay it. Sometimes you have to hear it over and over and over to encourage yourself. Sometimes you don't get it at one at one play, at one hearing. You can go ahead and replay it. Go ahead and uh, drop those comments down in the comment section. Uh, let's get this conversation going. Let's keep it going. Let me know your thoughts, your perspective, uh, your point of view on God has chosen you. Let me know your perspective. I'm eager to know. And for those of you that is viewing this broadcast and you have not made Jesus the center of your life, I want to extend that opportunity to you today. It is a sad thing to have lived this life and when it's over, 
you won't be able to live with the Lord in eternity if you don't make him the Lord of your life. We are not here. I am not here to judge you. I am just here to uh, extend the invitation to you. If you once uh, was living for the Lord and you have backslide, can I tell you, uh, the prophet said that God is married to the backslider. So just come on and slide back, confess your faults, confess your sins, repent, and rededicate your heart back to the Lord. And if you have never, ever given your life to the Lord, I want you to do what Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 through 10 says. It says that if thou confess with thy mouth that the Lord, that the Lord Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, that if thou confess thy mouth with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So as easy as that, believe in your heart that, uh, confess with your mouth, I'm sorry, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that God has sent him and believe it in your heart, you shall be saved. And after that, you need to uh, get in a relationship with other believers, start studying your Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to grow. And if you are in need of uh, some Christian uh, training, you need to be a part of uh, a body of Christ, um, you can reach out to me right here. You can inbox and I will be glad to help you. Um, yeah, that part. So, beloved, uh, again, if God has touched your heart to donate to this ministry that he has called, you can do so in three ways. Financially, through PayPal, Zelle, and the Cash App. Your seed will never, ever leave your life. It is on an assignment. And, you know, we can only grow as far as we plant. That's with anything. So God bless you. Until the next time. Bye for now.